You don't need Netflix, you don't need cable. Hop on YouTube, welcome to the hood table. Where we chop up local and global events vocally. You don't really wanna miss out on these conversations. Just joke a little, huh? Laugh a little, get that wine in your system for your glass a little. Expose current events, talk trash a little. You never know these opinions might clash a little. They addicted to the content, got them binge watching. You don't like it, then you want invited. Bet your friends watching in the house and in your job parking lot before you clock in. They don't wanna miss a second, but it's HT content. Everybody think they got something to say, so it's an open invitation. Bring it to the table, but if you come whack, just know we ain't buying in. We gon' probably turn you back until you start try again. Uh, yeah, welcome to the hood table. You don't need Netflix, you don't need cable. Yeah, welcome to the hood table. You don't need Netflix, you don't need cable. Hey, what's up, everybody? How's everybody doing? Come on in, come on in, come on in. So we can get started on this good old review. Queen Sugar. And let me, Um, I thought I had my other mic plugged in, but. And also right right after this, I will be doing a uh, review with um, Deanna Irvin. So we're going to get this together real quick. Like I got like 25 minutes to do this review, okay? So I'm just going to do the review. I'll be looking at the chat, but I might not have a lot of time to, you know, talk to y'all. So on that note, on that note, we're going to get right into it. Okay. We are reviewing Queen Sugar uh, season five, episode six. And it was called, it's across the bottom of the screen, May 27th, 2020. Okay. So, um, this show, this episode, episode six, started right at the top of the show. Um, we were taken back to that moment in which we can also vividly recall, you know, the George Floyd murder. And just listening to the cast who were all tuned in to that breaking news story, which we have already heard over and over again, it put me right back there on that day. The day that George Floyd begged for his life and pleaded for his mother to save him. And I couldn't help, like probably others, you know, I couldn't help but to become once again full of emotions, you know, enraged, angry, upset. Um, you know, looking back at that and like everybody else on the show, they felt the same way. So yes, that's what we're going to be discussing today is the way the cast members reacted on Queen Sugar at the murder of George Floyd. Now the reactions of the cast members just made it seem like it all just happened yesterday. Each of them was either angry, sad, or confused, or all of the above. Micah was even brought back to, to the time when he was arrested a few seasons back. And seeing and hearing how painfully George Floyd died triggered some very hateful emotions that he had had from his own arrest. Now, not only that, but Micah was also well aware, just like Floyd and the others, it could have very well been him that died for no valid reason at the hands of a cop. And let me just take a sip real quick. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Woo. Oh, yeah. Also like the video. <laughs> Thank you so much. But anyway, um, I was so glad that uh, his mother, you know, thanks to them being under quarantine, his mother, Charlie, was right there in the next room so that she could comfort him because Micah really needed his mother at that point. Because as most of us have stated, the police seem to be making a habit of killing us like white people did back in the day. But now they aren't taking us into dark alleys or killing us under the darkness of the night. They are killing us right in the open, right on camera, on live social media feeds, in front of large crowds, begging for them to show mercy. Like, where does it end? And will it ever end? I mean, I think that's what exactly Micah was feeling. He was so outraged for seeing Floyd die that he was all for protesting and honor his death, but not so peacefully. He was actually enjoying or overjoyed at the sight of the police station in Minneapolis being burned down to the ground by protesters. His mother, Charlie, she walked in and he was on the phone. She overheard him telling somebody, you know what? That's what they get. That's what the police get. Burn that shit down. 
Charlie was like, excuse me, young man. I know you are angry, but in the words of Ella Baker, give light and the people will find a way. Not only that, but she went on to say, ML MLA MLK said, darkness cannot drive out darkness. Only light can do that. Hate can drive out hate. Only love can do that. Michael was like, forget that peaceful shit. Because Martin Luther the King had once also said, a riot is the language of the unheard. Michael didn't want to hear that shit about no voting and about making no new laws and all that kind of stuff. His ass wanted to torch down some shit right along with the rest of them protesters, which is also one of the reasons why he was helping to form the protests in their own town. Now, as far as Unvi and Prosper, they both were in the kitchen. Um, I think it was, oh gosh, I can't even remember. Wasn't it in the evening time? when I, No, it was in the morning. I think it was in the morning. So I think she was making some coffee or something like that. But they were both in the kitchen when they heard the news of that in inexcusable murder. Vi was just trying to make so much sense of it all. She was like, if a man came into my diner and tried to pass a fake $20 bill off to me, she would think or could think of at least 10 things that she could have done differently than like calling the cops on him. For one, she said she would have just told him, I couldn't accept it. And for two, she said she could have just offered him something to eat, you know, because he was coming in there, you know, with some money in her diner. So, of course, he probably looking for some food. Now, Anvai, who had made a very, very good point, she then went to check in on her husband, Hollywood. But once she laid eyes on Hollywood and saw how frustrated he was, she just backed on out of the room to give him his moment in his space. And that's why I love them. They are like my favorite couple on here. It's like she can always read him so well that she knew to let him finish taking it all in before she actually approached him. And I say that to say because more, we all know that more black men are killed by the police than us. So although it hits hard for all of us, it most definitely hits hard and hits different for our black men and our black sons. So she was like, I'm going to let him have his space. But then Prosper, on the other hand, he was upset about the situation as well, just not as emotional as the others, but still upset. And I think that was primarily because over the span of his life, from living down south, he didn't already experience and seen so many horrible things when it comes down to racism. As far as Nova, though, man... And Nova almost had me break down, y'all, all over again, like I did when it happened last summer. At first, she seemed so cool, calm, and collected. Then she lit her candles and her incense, as she normally does when she's preparing to pray to her ancestors. She also called out a list of the names of some of the people who have died unnecessarily at the hands of police. But first, she set her timer on her phone for 8 minutes and 46 seconds which indicated the amount of time that the cop had his knee on the back of Floyd's neck before he died. Then in honor of her ancestors and those that we have lost from the police, she thanked them for their sacrifice that was forced upon them. After that, she proceeded, <coughs> excuse me, she proceeded to call out the names of Michael Brown Jr., Trayvon Martin, Sandra Bland, Eric Garner, Natasha McKenna, Tamara Rice, Philandro Castell, Alton Sterling, Bertie, Betty Jones, India Kager, Freddie Carlos Gray Jr., Jordan Davis, Dominique Fells, Ryan Milton, Walter Lamar Scott, Antoine Rose II, Atatiana Coquise Jefferson, Michelle Casu, Elijah McClain, Daniel Prude, Armand Aubrey, Brianna Taylor, and George Floyd. After that, she honored George Floyd. Um, it was like all the wind had been knocked out of her. And finding it hard to breathe, she just sat there. You know, she allowed the rivers to gently flow from her eyes. And that right there is when I had to pause the show and literally gather myself to finish watching and taking notes. But um, <clears throat> at the end of last episode, I had asked, how do you think the murder of George Floyd will affect Nova and Calvin's relationship? So once again, please give me your input on their scenes. Hey, Sharon, how you doing? Yep, that's what Prosper was doing. He said, this has been going on for years. He wasn't shocked. Did you see how he was reading that newspaper? He just flapping the read newspaper open, looking at our vibe like, and you surprised, girl? <laughs> he, was, he had me cracking up, though, because he was just looking like, it was just something that happens every day. But 
you know, I get it. I get it. But um, in this episode, Nova um, was obviously upset at Calvin for his lack of understanding. It wasn't that Calvin wasn't upset because he couldn't uh, empathize on the same level as Nova. I mean, the way Nova broke it down, I can see why white people don't group themselves all together in the same way that society groups us. Still, Calvin seemed to not be taking it all in. His daughter was, though. And why do y'all believe that? Why do you think that is? Me, personally, I think it might be because of her age, maybe. Because younger white people do seem to be the ones who are more likely um, to fight right beside us when it comes to Black Lives Matter. I don't know. Y'all let me feel about how y'all think about his daughter. But when Nova stood in front of Calvin describing to him how us as a black people, when we see black people do something really dumb or illegal, we sometimes do feel ashamed. However, Calvin not thinking of him and white people as a whole doesn't feel any shame for his people when seeing black people murdered by police brutality. But again, his daughter understood. Despite that, Nova, she didn't want any understanding from his daughter. She wanted it directly from Calvin. And like that scene, I mean, it was so telling. It like told everything. Like Nova was crying and praying. And Calvin, he was in the living room watching some fast action television show or movie with people shooting and guns and everything. And he was smiling ear to ear when Nova approached him. It was like as if a black man just didn't get murdered by the police on a live social media feed. He just didn't get it. He didn't get it. Um, I don't think that he didn't want to get it. He just, like some people, I don't know, child. I don't know, child. But anyway, while all that was going on at Aunt Vi's, Charlie's, and Nova's, Ralph Angel and his new wife, Darla, was on their honeymoon consummating their marriage. Darla had even bought some sexy lingerie. She had some music planned for him. She was dancing around and stripping for him. Then after making some good old love, they did a little skinny dipping in the pool under the midnight, under the moonlight. <laughs> no, nah, for real. They didn't do no skinny dipping. I don't think so. But they did take a dip in the pool under the um, stars. <laughs> Ra had actually suggested them doing that, knowing that Darla would enjoy it. But once back in their room, Ra got a call from Hollywood asking him how he's seen the news. Ra was like, looking like, I'm over here trying to enjoy my new life with my new wife. And you calling me, talking about have I seen some damn news? They wasn't trying to be watching no news. <laughs> Maybe some porn or something, but not no damn news. <laughs> but Raw did, however, turn on the TV, though. And from the moment he watched the replay of the murder of George Floyd, he was an emotional wreck. Raw, he just sat there in total disbelief, unable to form any thoughts on why or how that could have happened. But since he was on their honeymoon, he was like, you know what? <clears throat> we here. They there. He just going to have to figure out, you know, what's going on or how to deal with that once he returned, you know, back home. He didn't want, like, the evilness of the world to run to ruin their wonderful honeymoon. But on the flip side, though, Darla, she was ready to head back home right away, like, return right back to the comfort of their home and right back into the arms of their son. And to me, I could understand why she was so pressed, you know, to return back to their son, Blue. She just wanted to hold him in her, in her arms. She didn't know if he understood what was going on, if it was affecting him or not, or if um, Vi was keeping him or shunning him from everything that was going on. So she just wanted to get back home to him and make sure that he was okay, like all of us did. Every time something happened like that, I know I'm not the only one who called my sons and say, did you hear what happened? Are you okay? You know, where are you at? Are you safe? You know. It's just something that we do as a people. But uh, Ra, he clearly did not want to go back home. But he might as well learn, starting right now, that in a marriage, a happy wife makes a happy life. <laughs> so he went ahead and took his wife home. But y'all, when that white boy saw Darla in her Black Moms Matter shirt, tell me what y'all think. Tell me what y'all think, what you thought, what you thought. He has some nerve asking her, how would she like it if he wore a White Lives Matter shirt? <clears throat> Girl. He was like, my mama's life matter too. Which Darla said, and she was correct, it was very redundant. I was like, if that white boy don't get his ignorant ass back into that vehicle, I was afraid Rob was going to dump that gasoline all over his ass while they was at the gas station. <laughs> Ross said, you don't want this smoke, boy. You better finish pumping that gas and go on somewhere with your punk ass. 
<laughs> I get a kick out of every time Raw curses because I think in real life, I really don't think Raw curses. It, it, it just don't sound right. He was like, punk ass. <laughs> But anyway, I was like, you tell him, Raw, you tell him, get your punk ass out of here before his new wife have to witness him doll walking the shit out of his ass. <laughs> but then that quickly, just that quickly, I was like, um, <clears throat> okay, Raw, Darla's right. Leave that man to his ignorance and let's just head back home, you know, because I would hate and she would hate, you know, for him not to be able to return home to Blue to explain to him why things like that keep happening to us before something actually happened to him. So when he did make it home, um, Ra and Darla, um, they, you know, just like we all have to do, <clears throat> black people that is, they sat there and they started teaching um, their son what to do when they are stopped by the police or what to do when somebody who doesn't love you the way your parents love you um, treats you wrong. Because one day they will be stopped by the police. And I think that's true. I think every black man ends up getting stopped by police. My child, my children, both of them sons, they've been stopped by the police at least once. Okay. So um, you know what it is. Black, black while driving, BWD. Mm-hmm. It's real. Mm-hmm. He said the man at the gas station was doing the most he could. You know what? Hey, Betty. Hey, Betty Boo. Um, you said the man at the gas station was doing the most he could have just he could have just said nothing, but you know how it is. Okay, <clears throat> y'all know y'all probably seen me before wear my black uh shirt that says I wish a Karen would. I wear that shirt almost every time I go to Walmart. Okay, and I wish somebody would, and I do mean that literally. Mm -hmm. So uh <laughs> but yeah, but along with that, they also was telling him, you know, the most important thing was just trying to stay alive and doing something special with his life, which is also some great advice. But it was hard watching Darla tear up from hearing Ra have to literally explain to Blue some of the ways to try to stay alive, including never running or turning your back on a police officer. That's a big one. Even though people have done much less to get killed. But that's still a big one. So anyway, after hanging up on the phone, hanging up the phone for Rob, Hollywood started to board up on Vi's shop just in case any protesters took to destroying any of the local businesses. And Vi, who, who couldn't understand why anybody would want to harm her establishment, was thinking, there's no need for these precautions. Hmm, I can't wait till the next episode. But when she opened Hollywood's toolbox and found that gun, y'all, I was like, now, Aunt Vi, for real, you were born and raised in the South. You know exactly what racism looks like. So why the hell did she get so bent out of shape at the thought of Hollywood owning a gun? I'm like, in some parts of the South, it's legal to walk around with a gun displayed on your hip, letting somebody know that you got that heat. Not up here, though. Not up here, though. You can have a gun up here, of course. But... Um, just like I had to do, if you want the CCW, you know, the carrying a concealed weapons license in order to carry your gun outside of your home, um, that's what you have to do. But even still, I mean, the key word is concealed. You can't just walk around up north with no gun in your hand or just, even if it's on your hip, you got to make it sure it's absolutely covered or you could get locked up for, um, you know, displaying a firearm. You know what I'm saying? Or eventually lose your license for not keeping it concealed. But yeah, you said compliance. Hey, thank you. Thank you. You need that shirt, Sharon? I sure got that shirt and I wear it almost every time I go to the doggone Walmart. <laughs> but yeah, um, bye. she soon found out that Hollywood has owned that gun for quite some time and it's for their protection, you know, and then learning that she couldn't fathom like, why would Hollywood have a gun anywhere near her long ago? Remember, she had made him promise to never bring a gun into her home. And actually, she has never wanted a gun into her home, especially after she went through what she went through with her first husband. But after hearing his reasons, you know, especially when he said that if he ever got got, he would want the world to know that he loves somebody and somebody loved him enough to let him fight for their chance to live. And I was like, child, I was like, I'm by girl. That man ain't gonna ever harm you. So just allow him to have that doggone gun. And if you have to, make him keep it locked up. You know, if it'll make you feel more comfortable. But I'm sorry. I believe everybody should have one. That's just me. 
That's that's why I got my concealed license. That's just me. But anywho, anywho, back to Nova and Calvin. Um, Nova Calvin and his daughter Courtney were all seated at the dinner table, and the story of George Floyd and the reports of all the protesting, the violent ones and the peaceful ones, was playing on the TV, you know, over and over again. And Calvin has suggested that they record it and watch it later, to which, of course, Nova has said no. She wanted to keep up with everything that was going on without missing any new developments either, because it was very critical for her, because she was writing a story about it in her article. And she she had relayed that to Courtney um, that it was going to be about those who watch, specifically those who helped facilitate George Floyd's murder. And as we all know, that was Derek Chauvin, J. Alexander Quang, Thomas Lane, and Two Thou. You know who, of course, were going to plead innocent. You know to any charges. But um, as a matter of fact, you know, for the sake of the article, she asked Calvin how he felt as a cop when he watched some of his fellow officers beat up a black boy when he first became a cop. Because 20 years ago, as a rookie, he had watched his fellow officers beat up a black kid who had stolen a candy bar. He did ask the officers why they had to take it that far, to which they responded, it's a down payment. And we all know what that means. But upon hearing that story, his daughter Courtney could not comprehend how her own father would allow something like that to go down right before him, even though he was a rookie. And she had every right to inquire and question her father because rookie or vet, wrong is wrong, right is right. You know what I'm saying? He said, you don't walk around with a gun. I don't leave the house with a Oh, you walk around. Thank you. I don't leave the house with a You know what? I was at home early today and I had my front screen, my door open with the screen door lifted, you know, so I get some fresh air while I was watching my TV shows to do reviews. And my son said, I'm about to leave. And I said, well, leave the door open. He said, well, you need to go get your gun. <clears throat> and I said, he said, if you're going to leave the screen door open and your big door, you, you're going to get, you better get your gun. So I said, okay, go grab it for me. And he brought it to me and he put it on the table next to me. And he said, bye, I love you. And he walked out the door. So Betty White, we don't play about that either. Okay, <laughs> we stay strapped, but yeah, right is right, wrong is wrong. But y'all need to tell me, please tell me your favorite part of this this specific episode. This specific episode, like my favorite part, was kind of at the very end when uh when uh Hollywood he was lying in the bed with Vi. You know, later that night, Prosper was asleep, and they was lying in the bed, you know, talking. And he said the whole thing about George Floyd was bad. But he said, my God, when he called out to his mother, she was the only thing, the only person that he thought might save him. He said, do you understand what it is to be a grown black man? And all you have to protect you is the love from your mother. And she's already passed on. George's mother already passed on. He said, Hollywood said, did you think that maybe George, he felt her in those last moments? Did you think George saw her in his final moments? And on that note, make sure you like and share the video, subscribe to the hood table, be safe, be blessed, remain vigilant at all times. Come right back here in about five more minutes because I'm going to be with Deanna Irvin and we're going to be reviewing Bell Collective Reunion Part 2 on my channel. So come back and don't forget to keep it hood. Bye.